Thanks. Thanks. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to this session. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, the organizer for letting me present uh, the project that I'm working on since uh, three months now. So I'm going to keep my phone with me because I, I might receive some phone calls. Uh, forget me. Uh, I, might I might have some notes here. I need some reminders. Okay. So uh, before going deep into the subject, I would like to start by, yeah, by, by, by asking you a question. Who's relying on public transportation to go to work today? Right? And uh, who's taking the train to go to work? All right. All right, so I guess that you are used to this in station. If you are not used to this, I'm going to, to explain my experience with the train in Belgium. So I'm living in that part of the Belgium, here, somewhere here. I used to live there since 36 years, and since one, one week now, I'm living much closer to Brussels, mainly because of this issue also. also. So um, <coughs> as you can see, I'm li I was living in the worst part of Belgium when it comes to punctuality of trains. So that was a big issue for me. And um, from door to door with the train, it took me less or more one hour and 50 minutes. And with the car, one hour and 15 minutes. When I was leaving rather early in the morning, because if I leave at 7, OK, it took me three hours to go to Brussels. But OK. So <coughs> if you do the math, it's four hours lost in public transportation every day. And what, what to do in the train? for four hours every day. What are you, what can we do? So the first thing that we can do is of course sleeping, but it's not always possible because it's so much noisy in the train that for me it was almost impossible. The train uh, 96, 97 that I was uh, taking from Mons as are always using the old trains with automatic doors and it's, it's really, really noisy. So the second thing that we can do is reading of course. Third thing is listening to music. Of course, not too loud to not uh, bother other people. But this never happened. You can work. For me, this is my favorite thing to do in the train because I can quickly focus on, on something else. And uh, that's what I was doing in the train every day since years. Or you can learn by reading or, or, doing, or listening to some podcasts. So. In my case, as I, as I told you, I'm working. I'm always working in the train when I'm not sleeping, but it's really rare. And uh, being a long time, uh, being a contributor of the Drupal communities um, in PHP, I usually uh, maintain and develop my own projects uh, on there, committing some patches and uh, reviewing what's new on my projects. And just for your information, Drupal is just a framework written in PHP and created by Dries Boitart, a fellow Belgian. So how the story of SNCB alerts began? So of course, it started because of this. I, had, I, I was wondering why, in 2018, there is no way to have uh, consistent information about trains delayed. When you go in a station, you go, you see that on the live board that there's a, a delay in the train. Then you check on your on your phone, and you don't you don't have the same information. How this can be possible nowadays? So my idea was to create a kind of platform where where you can have all your uh, train delays and alerts in real time, almost real time. <coughs> so I had the idea to create the two. Uh, a tool that would alert train users of the delays and the alerts. So the tool is named SNCB Alert, so there is no fancy name. Uh, I had no, I hadn't find a really fancy name. It is open source, it's using uh, the Symfony 4 framework. It's relying on Git for uh, the source hosting and deployment, and it must be pluggable. I will come back on this probably later. So before going deep into the application, the first thing to, to do is, is to understand what is a delay. OK, a delay, everyone knows what it is. But <coughs> this is the definition that I found on the internet. But in our case, a delay is when the trains doesn't come, doesn't 
leave the station at the right time. For me, a delay starts after one minute. After one minute, if the train is, hasn't left, hasn't moved, is not, uh, is not, has not started yet, it's already uh, delayed. But for the SNCB, it's 15 minutes later. But that's, that's another subject. So where to get those data? Where to get the delays? Where to get the train delays? <coughs> Are these data available somewhere? Actually, yes, you can find them in the station, of course. But in our case, if you want to build an application, we need to have the raw information of these delays. And of course, I rely, uh, yes, what can you find first uh, on these live boards? You can find the destinations, the departures, the delays, the cancellation, but you cannot find the line number, for example. It's striked right now because this is an information that I wanted to provide to the users, but it's, it's not yet available on, uh, it's not really easy to find them. But I will explain how uh, I found them later. <coughs> <coughs> so the idea behind the tool is to provide information about delays and alerts in a standardized way. So of course, I got my data from iRail.be, which is the, from Peter Colpart. And um, these data, what, what, can I, what can I get from this data? I can get, of course, the departure station, the destination, destination station, the train line is not available, and I can get the delays. Okay, where to get the train line? We'll get, we'll get to there. In order to get the train line, of course, what I have to do is to create a matrix of six, less, less or more 600 columns on 600 rows, where all the stations of Belgium were on the columns and on the rows, and on each cell, I had to fill in manually, okay, line 96, line 97, that's uh, Mons, and I had to do that for every station. If you count, it's 36,000 cells to fill in manually, but of course you can divide it by two because the line from station A to station B is the same as station B from station A. So, but still, 18,000 cells to fill in manually is a huge work. So. It was, it was completely crazy. I started to do it, and then I, I submitted the document to uh, the guys from iRail, and we found another solution. I first um, asked the question on GitHub, and then uh, had some talk with uh, Peter about this. And um, how can we, we, we get those data, of those train line data, because they are not available on uh, iRail. And I guess, but I'm not sure that if they are not available on iRail, it's because the S SNCB and MBS is not providing them directly. <coughs> so, um, I've been told that I could use Wikidata that I didn't know about until uh, December of uh, last year to, to, to complete the train data and all, the, all that stuff. So I started to manually edit all the 600 stations that were on Wikidata. Of course, some of them were missing, some of them were outdated, <coughs> and I completed them. What were the, what are the information that I added in? Are, it is the iRail identifier. Each station on iRail has its own identifier. So I copy paste that URL and added it into Wikidata. I also completed and fixed all the station adjacent stations all the connected line to the station, and I made some uh, name normali normalization. <coughs> so, in order to, to show me the percentage of completion of that work, I created a, a tool that you can see here. It's just a map that shows all the stations in Belgium. So you have <coughs> green markers, yellow markers, red markers. Green markers means that all the information are, were uh, complete for that station. That was on the 24th of December, and I was already working on this since maybe two or three weeks. When I started this, it was mainly red and yellow points. Then the yellow points means that um, most of the information are there, but there, is only, there are some information missing. 
<coughs> and red means that nothing is there. We have to complete the data. And today, this is the, sta the status today. As you can see, most of the Belgian stations are complete, except some of them. You can see some yellow station. It's because these stations only have one adjacent station. That's because this is the end of the line, actually. When you have two adjacent stations, it means that, OK, all the information are, are there. But the, at the end of the line, you only have one adjacent station. <laughs> For example, if you take Mons, you can see all the information are there, and it's a green marker. So that was the first tool that I used to, to see if, I w if all the data were complete. In order to, to fill in the map, a Node.js library has been written just to feed the map. The Node.js library is available on, as a package on NPM, and it can be really useful to query the irail.be uh, API. Uh, it's fully working, and uh, you have a good ease with that library, is that it can also get the data from Wikidata and from irail and merge them together. So this is what I'm using for uh, feeding the map that you see here. <coughs> so, also, I learned uh, a new kind of database, uh, which is Neo4j. It was used to display the relationships between the station, because seeing this information like this is fine, but you cannot see the relationship in between each station. It means I cannot check if the, the, the data adjacent station is valid or not. I cannot check the consistency. So, I created that kind of map, which, where you can see all the link in between stations. And that was really helpful to check if a station was correctly connected to another. <coughs> and I like this tool so much that I did the same for uh, the London metro station. But uh, unfortunately, I was not able to do it from, for uh, the Belgian metro station because all the data are not, yet, not there yet. But for London, it's easy to find the data. <coughs> So the result, you have now three gateways for the, for the small tool that I built. You have a Twitter gateways. It's a, it's a tweet account that tweets all the delays and alerts greater than 15 minutes. You have a Telegram public channel where you, that you can join. And you have all the delays almost in real time. It's, it's really spamming all the users, actually, because as soon as there's a delay, even, even if it's one minute, there's a message. And you have also a Telegram bot that you can customize in order to get specific alerts. For example, you live in Leuven and you want to get all the, the alerts regarding Leuven, you can customize by just sending some comments to the bot and you get the, the, the alerts in real time. So on Twitter, right now, you have almost 28,000 tweets since, uh, I think, the 6th of December. I was not able to go back to the history. There were so much messages that I think Twitter removed some of them. Um, so this is uh, the first version of the, uh, this is a message from the first version of the software on Twitter. So this is the default template. You, you have also information, um, the geographical location added to the tweet. And this is the second version displaying the line. So it's, it's now possible, thanks to all the information that, we, that I added to Wikidata, to get the line um, where you have the delay, actually. So you can easily subscribe to, to, the, to the keyword on Twitter and get also the information through, through that way. <coughs> so on Telegram, you have a public channel and a bot. So here is, an ex here is the web version of Telegram. You can see the public channel and all the messages. Um, there's a lot of messages there every day. And here you can have a glimpse of what is the Telegram bot, where you have some specific comments like alert, reset, and you can add your alert or remove your alert. So here, for example, you have only two alerts for the line 97 and for the keyword car carnion. And so when there is a delay, I get the message directly on the phone. You can find 
the URL of the Telegram bot on the Twitter account. There is a link on the left where you can click and join uh, the bot. So what did I learn um, by doing this? I just I learned a new framework, which is Symfony 4. I, I did this on purpose because um, I wanted to learn this first. Then I learned to do uh, some Node.js libraries. I learned how to use Wikidata. I also learned Spark UL, which was really difficult, actually, for me. <laughs> uh, I learned also how to use Heroku, which is really nice to to push uh, um, an application in PHP. It's really, really powerful. I really enjoyed it. And I also learned uh, the graph database Neo4j. What I give back to, to the community, it's a Twitter account spamming its subscribers with strange delays greater than 15 minutes, a Telegram channel spamming subscribers with delay greater than one minute, and a Telegram bot that subscribers are able to customize to receive their delay and alerts in real time. So, what about the future? I'm taking my car to go to work. <laughs> Basically. I just moved in, so I'm not taking the trains anymore for now. So. <laughs> but but <laughs> the application is really is pluggable, and we could imagine to have multiple gateways uh, to it, like, for example, the SMS gateways, an email gateways, or anything like that. Everything is open source. It's on GitHub. You can check out the application. You can, you can do whatever you want with it. And um, that's it. So if you have any question. <laughs> yes. It's not really a question, it's a suggestion. Another frustration when you are uh, taking public transportations and when you are taking the train are the connections. So I found of uh, a way, uh, in a way to, to circumvent this. It would be for people uh, who are regular travelers who have passes to have an intelligent uh, chip. And when they enter uh, a carriage, they scan their passes and the information is sent uh, to the central system. And so when uh, the first trains uh, come to the uh, connecting uh, station, so the people there in the station know exactly how many people are traveling uh, within that uh, carriage and uh, need to do a connection. So maybe if there are huge numbers of uh, people who need to connect, uh, so the second train will wait a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So they need to get information into it. Technically, it's possible, I guess. <laughs> but there's so many ways to improve uh, train stuff in Belgium <laughs> that I think it would require another session just to talk about that. But yes, I agree that it's a good idea and it should be done, actually. So the entire IRL uh, project accepts pull requests. So it's <laughs> it is accepts pull requests. That's in the language of open source. That means that you can do a contribution as well. So you can, you can write it. You can write it in software. And you can also <laughs> put it as open source. <laughs> and then, uh, then we have it. Instead of uh, solving the root cause, uh, did you have some contact with SLCB to kind of integrate your application no. in no. one way or another, or refer mutually something like no. that? No, I, no have no, I have no contact because uh, I am really busy uh, with my moving since uh, two months now. I haven't been able to work on the application since uh, I think yeah one month and a half, maybe two months. And uh, I lost a bit of. Uh, I put that aside right now. But no, I had any. I hadn't any contact with them. I know that they they released a new site uh, for uh, giving statistics about um, uh, what's the name? Mobipulse, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I I think that could be uh, integrated as well in in the, in the application because we can scrap the page. Uh, twice per day and get the data and send them on different gateways really easily. But uh, no, I, I had no contact with them. But since maybe if you have, yeah, I don't know how your but, uh, relationship with SNCC I don't uh, think evolved and if there's now some more yeah. openness from the institution you know, to uh, <laughs> no. go for innovation and but to be I more think open with it. 
I think before presenting no, no, no. this, to okay. before talking about that with SNCB, we, we should polish the application and instead of providing Telegram and Twitter gateways, we should provide another kind of gateways, which is probably email, for example. We should let people subscribe to, for example, some keywords, I don't know, Moose, Bergen, Carnio, and then receive the alerts by email, which is more formal than Twitter or uh, Telegram. That would be maybe much more interesting for them. But uh, right now, I have no, I have no time to work on this, but it's in my head, so maybe, maybe one day I will do it. Uh, maybe one day I will do it. Okay. So, so this was just a side job? Yes, of course. Yeah, okay. I'm doing that in the train. Okay. <laughs> I have four hours to spare. Ah, that's why I asked you stop. You cannot do it in the car. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I get it. It's more than enough time for all the delays. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, as, as the initial creator of IRL, but, but then of course a lot of other people joined as well, like Brecht and, and Beth were sitting here also contributed to IRL. Um, I'm really happy that, that someone started to be using it and just sort of who created this, this, this thing. I believe that's really the core of, 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 uh, of what we wanted to do, like, like stimulate people coming up with, with a creative solution yeah. for their own frustrations, like, oh, exactly. like them, like them. It, it started uh, from a frustration, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so that, that I find really interesting and um, I, my question to you is like uh, if someone now in the audience is triggered to also start using the, the IRL API and the IRL data that, that that's out there, what, what would be your, your hints? Like, like how, how, what, did you make errors that they should not make right now? Yes, um, I made some mistakes with the Node.js library actually, I was uh, technically I was sending all the requests at the same time to your server. So at certain <laughs> point, I'm it. down. <laughs> <laughs> I was blocked sometimes. Instead of getting 200, I was getting 500, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm using a, a library which is called Promises for, for Node.js, where you can send a specific parameters, which is the concurrency. And you can send, for example, only two requests at a time. Yeah. And I, I really improved the performance uh, thanks to that. Yeah. I also used the cache in Symfony 4 to, to save, for example, the station list. Instead of requesting it every time, every two minutes to your server, it's cached for 24 hours. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um, for the PHP application, the main application, uh, a lot of uh, stuff has been done for the cache because it needs to be fast. It really needs to be fast because it needs to process all the data in two minutes. And all the data needs to be sorted by, by time, actually. Yeah. So I cannot uh, broadcast a message as soon as I receive it. I have to first get all the messages, sort them, and then broadcast them. Yeah. So the, this is what so really it was a, a challenge. Like, uh, so that's uh, 600 requests for each two minutes? Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. To the live boards, yes. Yeah. Okay. But I think you are already using some cache tags in your uh, yeah, on yeah. your server, so uh, this is taken into account in in the in the qu in the query. Yeah. So if it hasn't been modified, it doesn't do the request. Yeah. So yes, this is taken into account, of course. You can thank. Ben. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, the data that you cr well created is already exists, but it's closed. The line data uh, linked to the station. Did you? No, it, it's not closed. It's not closed. It's on Wikidata. It's just that when uh, when you have uh, a delay, it's always from a station A to a station B. Yeah. So I'm keeping all the data from Wikidata somewhere in the cache, okay. and then when I when I'm receiving a delay from iRail, I'm just uh, checking what are the connected line on station A, what are the connected line on station B, and then I'm doing a diff actually to get this, the, the line uh, which is impacted. Mm -hmm. This is how I do. Okay. And for some, for some station it's not possible to get these, lane, these lines because they are passing through multiple lines, so it's, it's not possible. But for most of them, yes, I have the line data.